Welcome back to Wood Engineering. I'm Jeff Orochko from Carleton University. And in this video, we are going to be looking at an example design for a nailed connection. So this is an example design for a nailed connection inside a uh, shear wall. And basically we're given um, a, um, you know, we've calculated previous to this, a design shear that will be, um, that will be um, on this connection, and that is this shear VF, which is right here. So that's that VF shear. So that is shearing basically my OSB. So I have OSB on the surface, and yeah, like this, and that OSB is gonna be sheared relative to the studs. And that's what happens basically if my shear wall deforms, then as my shear wall deforms, my OSB wants to stay as a solid piece. It does not want to shear. So what happens is it moves relative to the studs like this. And so I can get our um, applied shear VF. And here we um, are given the value five kilonewtons per meter. So I found this out from my structural analysis that this is basically the shear that I can expect on this interface. And uh, so we have a piece of OSB nailed to a two by four 38 by 89 SPF number two stud. Our OSB is 15 millimeters. And uh, we need to figure out um, what size of nails we should use and um, how many we need to meet that requirement of five kilonewtons per meter length of connection. So, you know, of course, like this is a um, larger system where we have our OSB nailed to the studs and, you know, it's a very long connection and it goes all the way around the OSB member. So we're looking at it on a per meter basis. So we're just looking at one meter of a larger connection. So we need to figure out the nail spacing and the size of the nails basically. And this isn't just a strength exercise because we also have to consider the geometry. You know, I need nails that are not gonna be too long so they're not gonna poke all the way through. I need to consider what are the minimum spacing requirements that I need to adhere to so I don't get splitting in the wood in between the nails. And um, I have to then also consider, of course, the strength. So um, yeah, we have some assumptions here. We're assuming this is part of a light frame shear wall. So that just affects what our modification factors are gonna be because we're gonna be able to use that kind of pseudo system um, effect factor, the J factor for, um, for, um, for nailed connections that are part of shear walls. Um, we're assuming that these loads are earthquake loads, so that's going to define our load duration as being short term, and uh, we're considering dry conditions, no treatment here. And we're assuming that the load applied here is purely vertical, so there's no, we're not assuming that there's any rotation happening um, in the connection. So we're just looking at the vertical shear of that nailed connection. Okay, so to start this problem, we're gonna start by looking at basically all the things that we know figure out the geometry of our problem and get some bounds on what kind of nails might be appropriate. Obviously, um, there are limits. I mean, I'm going to have, um, you know, I can't go too short or I won't get the required penetration into the stud. Um, and I can't go too long because then I'm going to go all the way through. And of course, the diameter of the nail is going to affect my spacing requirements. Okay, so we're going to start with um, basically what we know. What are our known um, element properties? Elements being, you know, the members and the nails. Okay, so in our two member connection, we have two members, obviously, two member connections, and we have a head side member and we have a point side member. So our OSB over here is our head side member, it's at the, at the nail head, and the um, two by four stud is our point side member. So we have to figure out the properties for these separately. Okay, so we know then that T1, which is the thickness of our head side member for two member connections is 15 millimeters. That's given, it's half an inch. Um, sorry, that's not half an inch, that's like five eighths. Um, and we have to find our G1, okay, which we're given in the standard for OSB is uh, 0 0.42. So this is not one that we go to, uh, we don't have to go to a table for this one. This one is given right in the body of the standard as we talked about in the previous videos. Okay, then we have our 38 
by 89 um, stud. Okay, so what's our T2 here? Okay, remember, T2 is not the thickness of the stud. T2 is the penetration of the nail into the stud. So we can't actually figure this out yet because we haven't decided how long our nail is. So this is something that we're going to have to figure out still. Okay, but we can figure out G2, which is our mean relative density. So if we go to this table, okay, we are dealing with a visually graded lumber. This is a two by four. It is spruce pine fir. And so our G value is going to be 0 0.42. Okay, and that's from that table, A.12.1 in 086.14 and A.11 in 086.19. And then we also know we're going to need this JX later in our uh, nailed connection equations. And we know that this is going to be 1.0 because we are not dealing with CLT. So that's a factor to account for a reduction of strength for CLT connections. Okay, so those are kind of our um, material properties. And for connection strengths, the material properties are just basically the densities which correlate to strengths. Okay, so now let's figure out our penetration length requirements. So we're gonna try to get a handle on the geometry of this problem. Okay, so remember that we had a figure, <clears throat> that's the 08614 figure number. <clears throat> There's also a, the same figure is in 08619. And uh, so we need to figure out basically our uh, minimum, uh, uh, our DF requirements, our diameter of fastener requirements uh, based on the thicknesses and then our penetration requirements. So you'll remember basically this is what that figure looks like approximately. Okay, so you'll remember this and we have a nail like this. Okay, and we had two requirements. One is that this has to be greater than or equal to three DF or 2.5 DF, the second only being in 086.19. Uh, so this is for wood and this is for OSB slash plywood. And we remember that this penetration requirement was 5 DF. So this has to be, this T2 basically has to be greater than or equal to 5 DF. Okay, this is T1 greater than or equal to 3DF or 2.5DF, um, depending. So I'm going to do it based on the 086.14 um, because it's more stringent. doesn't have that 2.5DF requirement. So for the side member then, okay, so if my T1 has to be greater than or equal to 3DF, I already know what the thickness is because it's given. So that's going to be give me a uh, upper bound on my DF, basically, on the size of the nail, which is going to be useful because we have to, you know, set some boundaries somewhere so we can pick a nail. So if I rearrange that inequality, I get DF must be less than T1 over 3. And remember, T1 was 15 millimeters. And so therefore, DF has to be less than or equal to 5 millimeters. That's an upper bound on our... Um, on our uh, diameter of the nail. So it gives us an upper bound nail size. And you remember for 08619 for OSB, this is T1 greater than or equal to 2.5 DF. And if I did that, then my DF would have to be less than um, six millimeters instead of five millimeters. Okay, so uh, 08619 allows slightly bigger fasteners if we're dealing with OSB instead of lumber because it's harder to split OSB than it is to split lumber. Okay, so now let's look at the requirement for the, um, sorry, that's the head side member. And now let's look at the requirements for the point side member. Okay, T2, this is the penetration now, not the thick, not the, um, not the thickness. has to be greater than or equal to 5 DF. Okay, therefore, 
df has to be less than or equal to um, 89 is the maximum penetration we can possibly get divided by 5 equals 17.8 uh, millimeters. Okay, this is uh, basically the maximum possible penetration. Okay, so this is not actually a number that's very useful. So this is the one that's actually useful, the five millimeters. Okay, so obviously we're not gonna use a 17, 18 millimeter nail. So this is, uh, this is fine. So we'll forget about this requirement. That's not actually limiting us. Okay, so now let's look at the length of the nail. Okay, so how much is the penetration? Okay, if this is my um, nailed connection here, and I have my nail coming in. Okay, then this is the length of my nail. This here is 15 millimeters. And let me just fix this drawing. And so this here is my length of penetration. So you can see it's length of nail minus 15 millimeters. Makes total sense. Okay, and we also have the requirement that the penetration length has to be greater than or equal to 5 times df, which is the same thing that we were looking at before. That's t2, because t2 is the length of penetration. Right, so this is also t2. Okay. So therefore, the length of my nail overall has to be greater than or equal to 5DF, which is the minimum length of penetration plus 15 millimeters. Okay, so length of penetration is over here. This one has to be greater than 5DF. So if I add that length of penetration to the 15, then I get the length of the nail. So this is my minimum nail length, okay? But it is a function of um, what the actual um, size of the of the nail is. So let's uh, also put a limit on the maximum nail size. Okay, and this is if I don't want the nail poking through the back of the member. That is not a requirement of nailed connection design. I can have the nail poking out the back if I want. Um, although that might be a hazard, I would probably have to clinch them. But if I want, I could poke the nail through and then clinch it on the other side. I'll get a strength benefit from that, but it's also gonna cost a lot more labor. It's gonna be a lot more labor intensive to do that. So generally I'm gonna design my nailed connections so that the nail is just embedded in the point side member and doesn't poke through the back. Okay, then you know we're gonna use probably a pneumatic nail gun to install all these nails since there's so many of them. So what is my maximum length? is gonna be T1 plus 89 millimeters. T1 here is 15 millimeters, right? So that's 15 millimeters is the OSB. 89 millimeters is the two by four. And my total is 104 millimeters. Okay, so L max, if I put that in inches, because in my table, a lot of the values are in inches, then it's gonna be 4.09 inches. How do I get that? 104 divided by 25.4, right? 25.4 millimeters per inch. Okay, so this is basically my maximum nail length. So I have a maximum nail size, which was up here. My maximum diameter is five millimeters, and I have a maximum length of four inches. Okay, on top of that, let's take a look at what are the, um, um, minimum spacing requirements. So this is for penetration and sizing and stuff like that, but we also have requirements for spacing. So how far apart do the nails have to be? Okay, so if we're looking at spacing requirements for our connection, there are only two spacing requirements that are relevant. I am going to just go up for a second so we can see our actual connection. Okay, so we have uh, this nail spacing A, which in the, um, o, that's what is called in 086.14. In 086.19, this is called SP. 
in 08619. Okay, so that spacing obviously is important. And the other spacing requirement is the distance between the nail and the edge, which is D or E in uh, D in 08614 or E in 08619. Okay, so that's the edge distance. There's no end here, not at least in our general connection. I mean, there is eventually going to be an end, but we're going to not consider that for now. Um, of course, you know, if I'm totally actually designing this, I'm going to have to figure out the end distance as well to make sure that once that um, once that piece of OSB reaches the end of the piece, then I will have to make sure I'm far enough away. Here I'm only asked for the spacing in general. And um, I don't have a, um, a row spacing perpendicular to grain because I only have one row of nails. Okay, so I only have um, spacing um, between nails in the same row. Okay, so that's why there are only two requirements. Um, if I want to figure out what those requirements are, I need to go to that figure that we had before. Um, let me just bring up what we had on our other one. So here was our previous um, table of spacing requirements. And so, as I said, we're doing ASP, which is this one. And we're dealing with um, SPF. So we're looking at this requirement here of 16 DF. And the other requirement that we have is our edge distance, which is this one here. And you'll see that our spacing requirement for SPF is 4 DF. Okay, so those are our two spacing requirements that we're going to use in our example. Okay, so back to our example now. I'm going to put those in. So the spacing parallel to grain has to be um, greater than or equal to 16 DF, and perpendicular to grain is greater than or equal to 4 DF. Okay, so let's look at um, the edge distance perpendicular to grain first. So for this one, oops, um, Okay, so we have a two by four and we're nailing in the short edge. Okay, so that means if I put my nail right in the middle, which is what I'm going to intend to do here from the drawing above, then um, my spacing is going to be uh, my maximum edge spacing that I can have is half of the distance here. Now, note, you know, if I have actually a shear wall and I have plywood, usually I'll have two pieces of plywood butting up some of these members. So I might actually have two different rows of nails, one for each piece of plywood is a case that you could commonly run into. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about here based on our drawing. So basically here, we're going to have that our 4DF, our edge spacing, 4DF has to be less than, um, well, let's say that our, let's, let's do it the other way so it makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to say E, our edge distance, has to be greater than or equal to 4DF. And our edge distance, maximum edge distance, is 38 over 2, because that's the width of the 2 by 4, that's the 2, divided by 2, greater than or equal to 4DF. Therefore, uh, DF has to be less than or equal to um, 38 times 4 over 2, which is 4.75 millimeters. Okay, so we have basically uh, narrowed down our length a little bit more. Okay, so before we said that our maximum um, DF was five based on um, penetration requirements, actually not based on penetration requirements, based on head side member thickness. And now um, we've narrowed that down even further. So based on edge spacing requirements, um, where I put my nail halfway in between, this edge and this edge, um, the maximum nail that I can use is a 4.75. Okay, and remember um, as well, recall that the maximum length was uh, four inches. It was about 4.09 4 um, 4 inches. Okay, so let's take a look at the table. 
of common nails and see where we are. So remember, we're saying that, okay, the maximum DF is 4.75 millimeters. So that's, this is diameter DF, okay? And the maximum length is four, okay? So if I use the maximum length four, then my DF would be 4.88, which is too big to satisfy my edge distance requirement because my edge distance requirement is 4.75. So four inch nail is not gonna work. I can't use the longest possible nail. So that means that, you know, I, sh I can, if I want to use basically fewer nails, then I want to use bigger nails, right? So that means that I can um, bump one down. So maybe this is going to be a good nail size, three and a half. So that's going to be, um, that's going to be not too long to poke through, but you know, as long as possible. And the maximum diameter is 4.06, which satisfies my edge condition. So that's no problem. So these are, you know, these are pretty sizable nails probably bigger nails than you would usually use in a shear wall. But um, anyway, for the sake of argument, let's let's select this one three and a half by 4.06. And now that we have our DF, we can basically go back and check all of those requirements that we were just looking at. Um, because remember, they were all based on DF. Okay, so a four inch nail is not gonna work. So as I said, Let's try the next smallest size. Okay, and that was a 3.5 inch long nail, which had a DF diameter of four millimeters. Pretty sizable nail. So this is, you know, if I'm going for fewer nails, then um, this is uh, the way to do it. But, you know, I should consider as well that um, I, uh, I like to have ductility. So if I have the nails bending, it's typically better. But anyway, we're going to go through with this one. Um, this might not be the optimum solution, but it is definitely going to be one solution. So um, 3.5 inch long equals uh, 89 millimeters long. Okay, so now let's check all of our requirements. Okay, so I check my edge distance. My actual edge distance is half the width of the piece of wood, which is 19. And uh, the requirement is that it has to be greater than 4DF, which in this case is 16.2 um, millimeters based on the DF of a three and a half inch long nail. Okay, so edge distance is fine. What about spacing parallel? Um, this we're not checking right now, but this is providing a um, minimum spacing which we already determined was 16 DF. Okay, so my 16 DF gives me 65 millimeters. So that's the spacing between nails along the row of nails. And uh, this is a minimum value. So um, of course, for my strength, I'm gonna have to figure out how many nails I need to meet my five kilonewton requirement. And then that will basically determine how many nails I need will determine what my spacing is within one, mil one meter. So as long as my spacing ends up being larger than this, then I'm going to be okay. Now let's check the um, minimum penetration requirement. Okay, our minimum penetration requirement was 5DF. That is um, this requirement right here, minimum penetration. Okay, and so that is going to equal, oops, 5. Okay, and what is my actual penetration? Okay, so when I check my actual penetration, remember that I basically um, have my length of the nail minus 15 millimeters. That's this figure that we were looking at right here. I'm calculating this length of penetration, which has to be greater than 5DF. And so I take my total nail length, which is my three and a half inch nail that I selected. I subtract 15 millimeters and I get my penetration length T2, and I find that that's 74, which is greater than the minimum penetration of 20.3. Okay. Obviously, if I made my uh, point side, uh, if I made my head side member thicker, the penetration is gonna go down. So I'm gonna have a lower strength. For the same nail for a thicker head side member, I'm gonna have a lower strength because my penetration distance is gonna go down. And then I'm just gonna double check my minimum side member thickness, my minimum head side member thickness. Okay, so my minimum head side member thickness according to 018, oh, sorry, 086 
14 is 3df, which is 12.2. My actual is 15, so this is okay. Um, if I'm talking about 086, 19, then for OSB, it's going to be 2.5 DF, which is 10.2 millimeters, which is a less stringent requirement. So of course, 15 still satisfies it. Of course, this is no surprise because we chose our nail size on the basis partially of um, what our actual head side member thickness was. Okay, so now we're confident that our nail is going to meet the spacing requirements and the penetration requirements. So it's an acceptable design, but we still don't know if it's strong enough yet. Or, uh, you know, we know that we can put this nail into the piece, but how many of these nails are we going to need? And are we going to need so many that they're going to be so close together that we're not going to meet our um, spacing parallel to grain requirement of 65 millimeters? So this is where we're going to find that out. Um, and so we're going to use the single, near, single nail. First, we're going to find the single nail shear strength which is the small NU using the Johansson yield equations. Then we're gonna put those all together to find the total connection strength. Okay, so just remembering that our DF that we selected is 4.06 millimeters. This is our trial selection for um, nail size. Okay, so first thing we need to do is calculate our embedment strengths that we're gonna put into the Johansson yield equations. So we're going to do this separately for the point side member and for the um, head side member. Okay, so first of all, our T2 is here. So I'm just recording that down. This is what we had before, 74 millimeters. Actually, why don't I make that consistent? 74 millimeters. Okay, we already determined our G2, if you recall, is 0 0.42. And we also already determined that our JX equals 1.0, since we're not dealing with uh, CLT. Okay, so embedment strength. Okay, so this was my equation for F2. This is my regular embedment strength for pulling a nail through the piece of wood. Um, basically for that piece of wood, which is my point side member, this is the two by four, the point side member. Okay, and if I sub all those in and then I calculate the strength, I'm gonna get 20.1 and that's gonna be in MPA. Okay, then I have to consider um, my embedment strength when the fastener is yielding. So remember that this strength is higher due to that so-called string effect. Okay, and what we get is... Okay, I'm labeling those G2 because I'm talking about the G for that specific member. Okay, which is the two by four. I sub everything in. And I get 22.1 MPA. So it is a larger strength, just a little bit larger in this case. Um, yeah, the 110 is counterbalanced a bit by the um, G to the 1.8. And, uh, you know, the G is 0.42, so it's a bit smaller. So, the, you know, this is an empirical fit of data to um, capture this increase in strength. Okay, then we need the nail yield. We get effective nail yield of 597 MPA. And then the last thing we have to look at is the um, head side member. Okay, these values we got before. This is for OSB. And so our F1, this is using the equation now for OSB strength for head side member is 104G1. So we get 25.9 MPA. And you notice all these strengths are, all these embedment strengths are more or less in the same range. You know, they're ranging between 20, 26, 27 um, MPA. Okay, so now I have my F1, which I need. I have my T1, which I need. I have my FY, which I need. I have my F3, and I have my F2, and I have my T2. Okay, so I need all of those inputs for when I do my um, Johansson yield equations, which is the next step. Okay, so we know that there are 
seven possibilities for these um, Johansson yield equation failure modes um, for two member connections, only six of them are applicable. So I'm going to check all six. Um, I'm going to do one of them all out entirely, and the other ones I'm just going to um, kind of put together quickly um, in the interest of time, so you can double check these yourself later if you like. Okay, so I'm going to go A through G, basically, skipping C, which is only applicable to three member connections. Okay, so if I'm doing this one, I'm going to get my F1 value like this. I'm going to get my DF value like that. I'm going to get my T1 value, which is 15. And if I multiply all these together, I'm going to get a number in Newtons. And then I'm going to divide that by 1,000 to get my number in kilonewtons. So I get 1.58 kilonewtons. Okay, so the rest is just basically um, plug and play from there. Okay, so obviously that is a pretty onerous process going through all these calculations and you have to be quite careful because there are tons of places where you can make mistakes. Hopefully I haven't made any mistakes in copying these, but I did calculate all these, double check them in the computer. So the final numbers uh, should be correct regardless. So now I look at all of these and now I'm able to determine which one of these is going to govern the strength and it's gonna be the lowest one. So that means that um, D, the mode D is going to be the one that governs um, that governs my strength. So if we want to see how that um, looks, I'm going to bring up the um, other drawing. Okay, so this is the drawing for D. And we're looking at a two-member connection. So basically what we're expecting to happen is that the nail will yield and it will have a uh, corresponding embedment failure in the head side member, which in this case is our OSB. So if we did a test, of this connection, this is what we would expect to happen in our test. Okay, so now we can specify which one is going to govern. Okay, so that means that in all of the equations that come along, or you know, basically when I finish up my uh, calculation for the total strength, um, I am going to use NU equals 0.884. Okay, so now that we have the individual nail strength, now we can go and calculate our required nail spacing. So I can calculate basically um, the strength of the connection. Okay, so recall that our required minimum shear strength was five kilonewtons and that's per, for a single meter single unit meter section of this, uh, you know, kind of much larger connection that goes all the way around um, the OSB sheathing. Okay, so, um, so our required NR, okay, which is our nailed connection strength, is going to be um, VF, um, which is five kilonewtons. Okay, so that's in one meter of length. Okay, so that's our NR. Okay, what is our KD? Our KD is 1.15. You'll recall that at the beginning of the problem, we stated that this was for earthquake load, so the VF was an earthquake load, so our KD is our short term. KD, um, everything was dry, so KSF is 1.0. There's no treatment, so KT equals 1.0. So if I want to find my capital NU, which is my modified individual nail shear strength, I modify by all those factors, and I get... Okay, so now I get 1.02 kilonewtons. So my nails are stronger because I'm talking about short-term strength right now. Okay, so then recall, what is our equation for NR? This is our nailed connection strength by capital NU, number of fasteners, number of shear planes, times our JF, which are our modification factors. Okay, so some of these things we know, number of fasteners, NF, that's what we wanna find. Um, how many fasteners are within that one meter? 
So our phi is 0 0.8 for nail shear. Our ns, which is our number of shear planes, is 1 because this is a two-member connection. Our je is 1.0, so no end grain nailing. Okay, these are all the components of JF, if you recall. JE, JA equals 1.0, no toe nailing. JB equals 1.0, because there's no nail clinching. And JD now is actually applicable, 1.3. Why? Because this is a connection that's inside a shear wall. And remember, so this is like a um, kind of system effect factor for nails and shear walls. So there's so many nails that uh, the variability evens out, so I can increase my strength. Okay, so therefore my JF is equal to 1.3. Okay, so now I can rearrange this equation up here. I'm going to rearrange and solve for number of fast of uh... okay so i set all those things in i get five kilonewtons as my target and our min i know basically that each nail is going to be able to take about one kilonewton okay so off the top of my head <clears throat> you know i could have anticipated ahead of time that <clears throat> probably i'm going to need something like five uh, nails per per meter of this connection. But you know, if I actually calculate this out and get all the details, then I find that my NF has to basically be greater than or equal to 4.73. Okay, so I can't use really 4.73. I mean, I could use 4.73 per meter and calibrate my spacing based on that. Um, let's, uh, let's calculate what our spacing should be. Okay, so if I have 4.73 fasteners per, um, per meter, that's I need that or more, okay, to get my minimum strength. And my spacing is going to be, and this is my SP basically, has to be then uh, less than or equal to, because smaller spacing means more nails, one meter divided by um, the number of fasteners, NF, so I get, you know, 1,000 millimeters divided by 4.73, and so I get that my maximum spacing is 211 millimeters. Okay, is this greater than the minimum spacing? Okay, remember way back, we determined what our minimum spacing was based on our spacing requirements. Okay which was, um, which is going to be 16 times df, right? So you remember way back here, when we were looking at spacing requirements, we checked our minimum spacing right here. And we found that our minimum spacing parallel was uh, 65 millimeters. Okay, and so that means that our spacing, final design spacing, has to be between 65 millimeters and 211 millimeters. So anyway, this is going to be fine. So I'm definitely going to be able to pick something in there. I'm obviously going to go closer to the 211 because that's my strength requirement. And that's going to allow me to use fewer nails. So I'm going to sum up my final design. So I'm going to use my three and a half inch long nails. Those happen to be called eight gauge. Um, you'll see that in the table uh, in the appendix which have a diameter of 4.06 millimeters, and I'm gonna space them at something even. I'm gonna space them at 200 millimeters. Spaced at 200 millimeters apart. Okay, so that makes a nice clean design. Uh, is this the only possible design I could have come up with? No, I could have used more smaller nails. So I could have, instead of picking the three and a half inch long nails, I could have, you know, I could have gone with something like um, maybe two inch nails. I mean, what was my minimum embedment? Um, if I look at my spacing requirements, I had a minimum penetration is only 20.3. So for sure I could use a two inch nail. Um, 
and uh, I would have been meeting that minimum embedment length. Um, uh, of course, that minimum embedment length will be smaller for a smaller nail, so um, I would certainly be meeting it. Um, and you know that kind of design will be useful if I had to put um, if I had to put two nails, like if I had to put a nail here and a nail here, so that I could put two pieces of plywood attached to the same piece. You know, I would have to nail them both in. So then I'm obviously going to have to use smaller nails in order to meet my edge requirement, my edge distance requirement. So a bunch more smaller nails would also work. In this case, um, since I'm only putting one row of nails in the two by four, um, this uh, this design is going to be just fine. And it's it might might mean less labor because I am using less nails. So that's it. So we went through an entire design process from beginning of end to end of choosing nail size and calculating the nail strength and then uh, determining an appropriate nail spacing for a connection.